are you guys ready to own the banana factory? Well, I know I am. Wink, wink. Anyways, let's get started here. There's a few things I want to talk about. I'm going to talk about the map really fast, how hard I think it is, what you should do, and I'm going to talk about the strategy a little bit. Then I'm just going to tell you a little bit about myself, uh, what I've been doing for the past few days, just in case you guys are interested. If you're really not, just let me know in the comments if you're not interested, and I'll try and not talk about myself. And then I'm going to talk about one last thing, how I'm going to post a really, really weird video in a couple of days if I get to a certain number of subscribers. So, first, let's talk about the map. I thought this was the hardest intermediate map, um, almost by far, uh, just because of the move moving platform. And it definitely inhibits your strategy, I guess you could say, because you really don't know what you're supposed to do or where you're supposed to put your towers. And uh, there's a bunch of towers that you have to usually put in strategic places, like especially, especially glue gunners, um, a lot of times ice, and a lot of times a few other towers that you need to put in a certain spot. And when they just move around the map, it kind of just makes your strategy go to poop. So you could either go with a few different... Uh, Oh, and also, there's only really spots for, like, maybe one or a couple banana farms. I mean, I, I can only fit one. I bet in low quality you can probably fit a couple more uh, in between those banana boxes. Uh, maybe two, maybe three. Not really sure exactly how many. Um, but I can only fit one on high quality. And I didn't really try too hard either. And it's Banana Factory. Come on, you should have lots of banana, banana uh, farm room. But there isn't. There isn't any room, which kind of made me sad, because I love banana farms, and when I can't make my banana farms, I get sad. Anyways, uh, the next thing about the map is that the map is actually, uh, how far the balloons travel is actually really long. So uh, the spike factory is actually very good for this map, and it actually leaves a spot open for the spike factory. Also, there is a couple spots where you can put random towers along the, along the middle there, where they don't move at all. But the bad thing about that is that you can't really get close to the to where the balloons travel. You actually just have to kind of put them kind of far away, so your range is kind of not as good as what you would want it to be. So yeah, it is actually quite a bit quite a bit of a difficult map. I'd almost say it's advanced. I'd say this is definitely more difficult than Volcano and a few other of those advanced maps. Um, maybe even on the level of Clock or something like that. Also, one thing about the map that I didn't like at all, oh my god, this kind of made me angry, was that um, after you ended the round, and the little yellow lights start shining and going round and round, and your uh, little thing starts moving, the little track starts moving, your towers that are on the track don't shoot. WTF. That's just retarded. Why would they do that? You, your tower should just shoot automatically, you know? Like, they should know where the balloons are and just pop, 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 kaboom, pop those mofos. And they didn't. So I was just kind of sad. Because every once in a while, I mean, it didn't really affect my strategy, but it could have. If this was a little bit harder of a map or something like that, and they had that in there, and I had to wait like 10 seconds after every single level just to make sure those, my, make sure the track moved so my towers could shoot, that's just gay. Why should I do that? Anyways, um, that's what I'm really going to talk about on how gay the map is or how much I like the map. I liked the hardness, but I didn't like those stupid little things and the lack of banana farm room. Um, let's talk about the strategy a little bit. Like I said, there's actually a pretty long track, so spike factories aren't that bad. If you get a spike factory in there, you're definitely set. Um, I did a little bit something weird to start. Um, you probably noticed this already. Just in case you're not watching, you're going to do this strategy a little bit later and kind of use my use what I've done and learn and do it again better or something like that. You can totally do that. That's what I recommend doing. Um, I started off with a boat and I put the boat on last. And I put him in that certain spot because he could shoot it in the front end or the back end. Uh, that's kind of up to you if you want to do that. Um, but it definitely does help. Uh, where you want to put the boat though, you could put him somewhere more closer to the middle. It seems like it didn't work as well. But I put him close to the front and put him on last. And what I did was uh, one of the balloons got by on level like 5, I think, round 5, and I just built the spike factory just in time, so it built a set of road spikes to pop that red balloon, and I could get no lives lost without using any road spikes whatsoever. And, uh, that was just like the beginning part, and then I basically built a farm, I think I built a monkey engineer, and then upgraded the farm again, 
And then I started, then I got with the glue gunner. Uh, after I got the glue gunner, which kind of, by the way, was not that good because the boat was basically killing all the uh, expensive balloons or the high tier balloons, I guess you could say. And it left the glue kind of not doing exactly what it should be doing. It should be popping the strong balloons all the way down to the bottom, no problem. It really wasn't doing it as well as it should have. It was missing quite a few balloons because of the range issue and because of the boat. And you can delete the boat if you want, but what's, what's going to end up happening is every once in a while you're going to have the, your towers that you built on the uh, the moving grid thing and that thing, and then those are going to pop these strong balloons and your glue gunner's not going to work again. So, realistically, I just left the boat there because I figured he couldn't do that much damage. Other towers are going to do the exact same thing. And then after that, it's basically the exact same thing, but you can put the super monkey pretty much wherever you want because he's going to move around the map, and pretty much no, no matter where you put him, at a certain level, he's going to be in a bad spot, and at certain levels, he's going to be at a good spot. That's pretty much all i got to say. Oh, and one more thing. Oh, my God, I totally forgot to mention this. Uh, the moving belt sucks because... If you put, like, a tower, like, near the top of the moving belt, and you put another tower, like, in the middle of the moving belt, eventually your towers will spread apart or get closer together, depending on where you put them, which is kind of weird. Uh, I don't really understand the physics of it. I'm not going to try and explain it or anything like that. I don't even really think about it. I just thought it was stupid. Um, your towers could, like, spread apart or get closer together. So, you're, like, if you built a monkey village or something like that, your towers could actually spread away, away from the monkey village. It's totally stupid. Um, as for the strategy goes, like I said, play Super Monkeys wherever you want. After that, you pretty much set just like usual. I built a Spectre as my after my first Super Monkey, and I was totally fine pretty much the rest of the game. Excuse me. Um, now, you know, I'm just going to save the rest for, the, for another video, guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I probably will post another one tonight, so... Great for you guys if you like these. Anyways, yeah, I do love when you guys press the like button for me. I'm not begging for you to press the like button, but I do really appreciate it when you do. Uh, thanks for watching, and have a fantastic freaking day.